have a $250 donation from Dr. Dave. Thank you all for your hard work toward preventing cancer and doing it while we're all having fun watching and playing. Best of luck to the Mario 3 Mix crew, and congrats to Mitch on the recent world record. And it looks like we're about ready to kick things over to Mitch, Jabum, and Gadian for their race. Gentlemen, best of luck. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody, to the Super Mario Bros. 3 Mix Any% Percent Race. To our left, we've got Mitch Flower Power. You may have heard of him. <laughs> In the center, we have the current world record holder for this category, Jabum. And to our left, we have Gadian, who is in the top three currently. <laughs> and on my right, I have my friend Rage Quits. Hello. I'm the Haxer. And I'm Glitch Cat 7. <laughs> so, yeah, I think uh, this is going to be a game that a lot of Mario fans are really going to enjoy. It pulls from a lot of different Mario games. Um, so, there's going to be a lot of levels and a lot of mechanics I think you're going to recognize. Obviously, it's a Mario 3 game, so you're going to see a lot of Mario 3 stuff. But, um, yeah, it pulls from pretty much everything up to Galaxy, so. You got it. Yep. Ready? We should begin starting here. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's all right. All right, we're going to count down. Five, Five four, four, three, three two, two, one, go! go! And we're off. You'll notice that all three of our runners will be picking a different character. There is actually no difference between the three, um, although Toad does run off the screen a little faster, so Mitch gets a little head start, I guess. Yeah. So you wanna, they're going to try to keep P-Speed here and uh, try to go for a pipe clip. Uh, if they don't get it, though, they will go through the uh, second part of 1-1. Yeah, this is actually the... Well, the section in 1-2, um, obviously there's no warp zone in this game, but um, they'll be running through this section. You'll notice there's going to be more lag than you're probably used to seeing um, in a, most Mario games. That's because there's a lot of extra sprites on the screen. So one of the important strategies we'll see throughout the run is going to be reducing that lag to try to save some time. It's all part of the charm, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The lag ain't going nowhere. <laughs> and they're all even. And uh, you'll get a good glimpse as to uh, some of the strats for lad reduction here. Um, they're going to try to take an upper route and uh, try to eliminate a lot of that lag. If you were to go on the bottom level, it is, it's pretty brutal. Yeah. Um, but also going into the second part of this level, we're going to get an introduction to a, to a, friend, a friend of ours. And who is that? He's uh, probably your best friend, right? His oh, yeah. name's uh, Barry. He's the little cheap cheap you're going to see throughout the game. And uh, he just kind of does random things at times. So you, he'll just pop out of nowhere. He'll take some damage, maybe even die. So be on the lookout to see if that happens to any of our runners. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Unfortunately, Mitch taking a death there. <laughs> it happens. It Getting happens buried. a lot. There's a lot of places for him to catch up, though. This is a, a very long run, so. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of clips, a lot of attempted clips. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of stuff that's really going to, or could potentially change the outcome of the race. Yeah, so here we have Gadian taking the lead. Yeah, so these, or this fort, it takes a lot of inspiration from, uh, obviously, a lot of the um, eight, or the, the level fours in vanilla SMB1. Um, I believe the end of that was actually 6-4. Um, and we'll see that in these sports throughout this World 1. Like, most of the levels in World 1 are going to be from Super Mario Bros. 1. There is one exception, though, um, which we'll get to see pretty quickly here. And we got our first look at Bowser there. He actually is going to appear several more times throughout the game, and actually, in fact, a few more times in this world as well. Gosh, he's always in another castle. <laughs> <laughs> so here you're going to see Gadian uh, purposely take a fall here. Uh, that's just a skip berry. Jabman will do the same thing. Yeah, it saves him some time being able to skip this um, overworld 
fight. Um, unfortunately, Mitch is going to have to fight him here because he took the death. Um, so there's no way for him to avoid it. But it's not the worst. You, you just get an extra um, inventory item, which may, you know, become useful later on, depending on how the run goes. Yeah. And yeah, this is the unique or the, the different level, I guess, in World 1. It's actually the Donut Secret House in that first section. Um, so yeah, Super Mario World fans probably will recognize that one. Let's see if Mitch gets that clip. It's a little bigger, uh, harder being as a big toad. And he gets it. Nice. Yeah, Very nice. That, that sounded easy. Oh, oh! Javin gets hit by that fireball. Yeah, unfortunately that does happen sometimes if you're a little slow getting there. Um, that fireball will just come up. Speed it up, Javin. <laughs> And nice little clip coming out from Gadian there. Yeah. Very nice. You'll see more. Those gold mushrooms that they're picking up are checkpoints, yeah. in case you didn't know. But they don't need those, obviously. Yeah. You know. It's scary when they don't, though. Yeah. <laughs> Very Safety. scary. Ugh. Absolutely. So yeah, we get our second look at Bowser here. And uh, if you know you aren't able to defeat him fast enough, he actually becomes Super Bowser and uh, sometimes defies the laws of gravity. He just kind of hangs in the air after the bridge disappears and he'll jump at you and, and you know, kill you. So it's a great little mechanic there. So Gadian gets to skip that berry fight, which is uh, huge. Uh, but uh, one seven he's in now is a... Uh, it could really change the pace of the World 1 race, for yeah, sure. Yeah, this is the scariest level, probably, in World 1. There's a lot of technical platforming going on, um, obviously. And... Um, Make it short work of it, though. Yeah. It's, yeah, really good job maintaining peace speed there. That was really, really impressive. Yeah. Both Jab and Mitch had to fight Barry. Yeah. And so it's not the worst thing to fight that, because um, they're going to actually use that star later on the run. Um, yeah. So it was either here they were going to grab it or in World 2, but obviously they want to skip it here and then chase them in World 2 oh, if they have no. to. So Jabin takes a fall. Uh, Gadian's going to try to go for a uh, castle clip, what we call it. Um, if he's able to pull it off in the first shot, he'll save 18 seconds. Uh, if yep. not, he can only do that while he's Big Mario. If he ends up getting hit by Barry, hey, Barry, hi. Uh, <laughs> he's got to take the, yeah, he's just yeah. going for the pipe. Good call. Yeah. yeah, so this is the, obviously it's a remake of 8-4, so this would be the equivalent to the underwater section of 8-4 of SMB1. We don't have fire bars, unfortunately, in, in Mario 3, so we just get these electric jellyfish instead of those, apparently. So yeah, we're gonna see Gadian coming up here on the final Bowser of World One. Gives him a nice bop on the head. And yep. And here goes Mitch with his clip attempt. <laughs> he even tried to throw a hammer. Like he tried. It was cute. <laughs> nice, nice try, Bowser. <laughs> oh, he uh, just. Oh, that was not <laughs> intentional. <laughs> In order for that clip to work, you have to be big, and then you're jumping while you're crouching, shoving your feet into the pixels of the wall and then standing up and that pushes you through the walls. We'll see a lot of that later in the run as well. We're gonna yeah. see Gavin's attempt too. Uh, Gating just made Oh, oh first attempt. Nice, nice job. So Gadian's going into 2-1, which, World 2, tell us about World 2. So you're probably going to recognize this level as actually 1-1 one, one of Super Mario Bros. 2. Um, and we're going to see a lot of levels in this world from Super Mario Bros. 2, or at least they pull um, design uh, inspiration from Mario Bros. 2. The U.S. version, I should say. The best Mario Bros. <laughs> <laughs> you, you might have a horse in that race. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he does a nice job of that climb there. Um, makes it through the level, keeps his upgrade. Um, it's actually more important than you think, but there are a lot of spots. If they do take damage for them to re-grab these upgrades, but obviously it takes time every time they lose it. Mitch doing something a little bit different. You can't swim in the water in SMB2 proper, but you can in this. So Mitch kind of getting through that waterfall by swimming was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's worth noting, you'll probably notice they're jumping on the vines in this game, and that's something you can actually do in Super Mario Bros. 3, so it's something unique to this game, um, and it's a nice little uh, improvement, I would say. Yeah, on top of the regular SMB3 mechanics, they've also added some custom stuff for this game that behaves a little bit differently or lets the player, gives the player a few more options for movement. 
negating and skipping that checkpoint. Is it scary? Okay, he's good. Makes it through the uh, section of, I Ooh. believe this is 5-2 here. It's a remake of... Keeping his P-Speed going up that vine as well. He maintained P-Speed and had it when he got to the top. That was really good. Oh, no. Oh. So we should recognize where Gadian's at right now, too, as well, right? Yeah, this is actually 1-3 um, from um, Super Mario Bros. 2 as well. And we're going to actually, at the end of this stage, see... Uh, a boss that we recognize from Mario 2, from Mario 2, I should say. Ooh, Jab and having some trouble with those vines. All right. And here we go. This is our first look at Birdo appearing in a Mario 3 game. Do you think if they if they remix this remix, it would go back to normal? <laughs> <laughs> Makes quick work of Birdo there. Gets really fortunate eggs there, actually. Yeah. And All right, so two four. This is our next clip that we're going to go for. Um, so we're going to try to clip through this wall here. And when they go out the other side, they have a four frame window to land the jump and not fall to their death. This is, could change the pace of the race. Right yeah, there. this is one of the most important uh, little tricks of the run. So um, potential for a lot of catch up for both Mitch and Jabum. Yeah, J Mitch could take the lead right here. Oh, and Diddy and Mitch through, gets all right. It. Yes, but he has to stick it. And he does, nice. good. Nice, it's a four frame jump. Yeah. Yeah, if you, if you miss it, you're falling down a gap and you gotta do it again. <laughs> Gideon's moving on. Even though you can't see the divisions between the blocks and this wall, it works the same way as a clip where you're placing your feet in between the pixels and the seam of the two blocks. Now ja Jabin has entered the ring. He's going to try to go for his clip. And you'll see on Gadian's screen, he's actually making his way through 7-1 uh, of SMB2. Man. Gating. This is punishing. Yeah, this clip is sometimes very punishing. Uh, oh, Mitch. Yeah, 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 there it is. Stick it. And he does. We're fighting Jab and Jab. Yeah, All right. Very good. That's why they call him the Michael Buble of gaming. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the overworld um, fights in this world are actually Shy Guys, so we see Gadian purposely fighting that Shy Guy to grab a star, since I did mention he skipped oh. one in World 1. Unfortunately, Jabin has to fight an extra Shy Guy battle. You know, the Shy Guys are just walking around, hanging out with everybody. They seem pretty extroverted to me, really. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, on Jabin's screen, you can actually see this is one of the scarier jumps in the game because you have to jump off screen and then land and then do a jump. So um, all three runners doing a great job there and, and no way taking a death. Yeah. I think we could hear a donation. You got it. I have $250 from someone you may know, uh, Captain Southbird. I'm honored to support your charity, and I'm happy my little ROM hack can be used to help raise money to fight cancer. Thank you so much. Yeah, shout out to Captain Southbrook. Thank you so yeah. much for making this. Yeah, just making an amazingly fun game. All right, so... Everybody in the same stage now, that's good. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, Gadian's gonna see a familiar battle, uh, boss that we are used to seeing before and before in previous games. Please tell me it's Culix. Oh, it's yeah. Mouser. It's Mouser. Mouser. <sighs> so, uh, Gadian's going to take some intentional damage here to skip an entire cycle. Uh, he's going to go ahead and hurt himself with the with Mouser, and it will count as two hits on Mouser, ending the fight that much sooner. 
And we see on Javim's screen, he's actually finishing the climb part of this level, which is very difficult. Um, and it looks like all three runners actually did it quite well, so. Absolutely. A really nice thing about these airships is they don't always have the auto scroll on, which made the airships in SMB3 very, very slow. But without the auto scroll, uh, Gadian can just run right through here. Yeah, this is actually the first completely um, custom level in this game um, that did not appear in any previous Mario game. But we'll see a familiar face at the end here. Is that, is that the Great Wart? Ho, ho, ho. That is the Great Wart. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little easier um, than what you see in Super Mario Bros. 2, but he's still here. He has a different attack, too. Those bubbles coming up from the floor are not the way he attacks in vanilla SMW. Yeah, he's... This up, attack that right here. He's upgraded a little bit. He's learned from last time. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, the upgrades are not good enough. Behold his mighty two attack patterns. <laughs> So, Gadian, the first one to make it out of World 2 here. Yep. And he'll be going into the spookiest world <laughs> of the game. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Is that scary? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is uh, actually a remake of Pumpkin Zone 1 and Super Mario Land 2, the, the handheld game. Um, and we'll see a lot of inspiration in this world from actually that. Or in this world, yeah. Yeah. Here we have Jabba and Mitch uh, wrapping up their fight with Wart as well. Not too far behind. It's still anybody's race. Absolutely. There's a, you know, as they implied in their interview prior to this, there's some tricks that you do in World 6 that can really decide things, so. All right, Mitch is moving on to World 3. And Jabim's going to... So is Jabim. Oh, yeah. Look at him oh, showing off. Oh, yeah. Showing off. <laughs> getting, getting, that, getting the swag clip. Very swag clip. <laughs> Saves so much time. So Gadian's moving on to World 3-2. <laughs> this is actually my least favorite stage of the game, just because yeah. there's so that much lag. lag. Yeah. yeah, that lag is great. It's, it's really hard sometimes to get inputs to go through um, when there's so much lag, and so sometimes you might miss that jump over the gap and, and fall in it. So. So, yeah, there's the, the rabbit suit, and uh, by doing it this way, what Gadian's doing, he's skipping an auto-scroller, right? Yep. A extremely punishing auto-scroller. So when he makes the cross... Yeah, you don't want to play that auto-scroller. Yeah. And that's really the only part of the run where they'll end up using the, the rabbit ears. But Captain Southbird is watching. He's like, what have they done to my game? <laughs> <laughs> and we're actually going to see another new upgrade here on uh, Gadian's screen for the first time. Um, it's actually from New Super yeah. Mario Brothers. It's the penguin suit. Um, and it, it basically, in this game, it functions similar to the frog suit and how you swim, except you run normal as well as you shoot ice balls that can freeze enemies. So it's really useful uh, in a lot of stages. That water there, just defying the laws of physics. Yeah. <laughs> just floating in the air. It makes dreadful water stages just <laughs> kind of pleasant. Just kind of, kind of. And they're going to want to hang on to that for, this, uh, for the rest of this world as well. Yep. Yeah, the frozen enemies, uh, you're going to see that. The ice balls can freeze the enemies, and uh, you're going to see those frozen enemies being used a little bit more later on for cool effects. So you might, we'll see what they do, honestly. <laughs> what, what are they yeah. gonna do? Gadian is, uh, he's just taking the pipe route uh, and he's gonna go ahead and use the blocks here uh, to push himself through the wall. And, and you, you steer those with your, with your, with your pad. And yeah, uh, that's the thing from Super Mario World, the guided uh, yeah. block snake that he's using. And it'll just push him right on through. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. Hey Rage, who discovered that clip? Uh, not me. <laughs> Gavin did. He was watching me. He's like, Eureka, I have an idea. That's actually called the Rage Clip. So he accidentally discovered it. <laughs> the other route was horrible. 
And so, yeah, you actually see on Jabim's screen the unique overworld enemy you fight is the ghost, but it's floating dry bones, and you just stomp on them. Um, and even if you fall down in the, the the gap, you actually don't die. You just respawn at the beginning of the stage. Yeah. That's one big boo. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and there you see he's using the frozen dry bones that are coming out of the pipe by freezing them and kicking them back. That's how he manages to fight this boo. There's a little bit of RNG involved here. Depend, you know, depends on you know how fast those dry bones come on the screen. Like, see, we we see him getting a really slow pattern there, so he's got to kind of walk and lead it. How did he do that? <laughs> <laughs> nice fight. This is actually based on a ghost house from Super Mario World, if I'm not mistaken. I, I don't believe it is. I think this is actually the first unique ghost house um, in this world, or in the game. Oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> argue about it. I want to... <laughs> no, I think he's right. I, yeah. I can... You just going to take that glitch cat? <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> Well, a lot of the, the backgrounds and the enemies come from the Mario world. You get the eeries and the little background Absolutely. effects there. We see Mitch getting a really nice uh, dry bones there for that last hit. Mm -hmm. And Jabum also falls him, and they're both out of the boost stage. All right. And so on Gadian's screen, you'll, Super Mario World fans will probably see a level that they recognize in the sunken ghost ship, but there's one specific thing missing, but I, I, I can't remember what that is. Is it, um, is it mysterious? It, it could be. Does it have a question mark on it? But it's not a box. It's a round shape. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's some kind of sphere or perhaps an... What, what is it? What is it, guys? What is it? Is it, is it the orb? Oh, well, we'll see. We'll find out, I guess. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> And so, yeah, uh, this is why it's important for them to maintain that penguin suit, because he's able to instant kill that boss with, by freezing that bullet bill. Otherwise, you have to stomp on him three times, so it saves a really significant amount of time. Yeah, yeah. not to mention the penguin suit also gives you the frog suit swimming in the yep. water. It makes that water level a lot easier. Yeah. All right, so Gadian's going to be moving on to World 4, which is based after Super Mario World. That is correct. And we'll get to see a familiar face. Yeah. In World 4. Who is that? Who's that guy? Yoshi. Oh, man. There he wow. is. Wow. Yoshi in an NES game. How about that? Yeah. Crazy. Oh. Bye, Yoshi. <laughs> <laughs> Just as sacrificial as he always was. Oh, yes. True to the game. <laughs> and so, yeah, they'll actually be using him throughout this world uh, for a few different strategies. Uh, he's actually really integral in this stage. He actually doesn't have a pipe transition when um, you go through a pipe, so you instantly go through the pipe and save quite a bout of time, or quite a, a lot of time doing that. About four seconds per pipe. Yeah. Uh, how did how they're able to fit Yoshi into this game, though? Well, they Southbird was uh, he purposely designed each stage to have Yoshi in it. So the reason why they uh, Nintendo couldn't put Yoshi into the NES in Mario 3 is because they couldn't put him into each stage. Yeah, it, the stages yeah. were too complex. Yeah. So, like, these stages are much simpler, and you'll be able to see that in any stage he appears. Something else cool about Yoshi in this game uh, that's not available in Mario World, if he has a shell in his mouth and spits it out, he can get one of those mid-air shell jumps, and that helps yep. him get through these sections a little bit faster. Absolutely. We'll be seeing that soon, too. Yeah, we get to see Mitch pull off one of these shell jumps right here. The free shell jump. And this level with the urchins is an homage to Forest of Illusion 2, if I'm not mistaken, with yep. the urchins just swimming through. Yeah, except you've now got a penguin suit, which allows you to go through it much quicker because you can freeze these urchins and then um, destroy them. Unfortunately, you have to get really close to them, so you're going to see the runners be really cautious as they're going through the stage to make sure they don't lose the penguin suit. Yeah, their hitboxes are extremely deceiving. Yep. I like how Yoshi just gets tossed off at the end of Jabim's <laughs> level. Like, you're done here. Good job. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Jabim getting a lot of dino movements. That's unfortunate. Mitch having a little trouble with the urchins, but he makes it through. 
And so yeah, we actually see on Gadian's screen, he's um, going through sections of Ludwig's castle. Um, and he's actually intentionally taking damage here. So um, don't be alarmed that there is a strategy coming up that requires him to be small Mario. Yes. It's really impressive that the maker of this game could get the walls to scroll up and down like that. In Mario World, that's an easy thing to do, but on NES, that's a really cool technical challenge to get those pipes and everything to move like that. And there you see your first uh, defense climbing mechanic from Super Mario World. Uh, the only difference in the remix versus Mario World is that you can't do a Koopa Punch through the fence. No Koopa That's boxing. The best part, right? It is. <laughs> These guys should be familiar. Uh, yeah. The Resnor. They look like they've been on a diet, though. They're kind of <laughs> way, yeah, way, yeah, way skinnier this time around. They're, they're trying to look good for AGDQ. Oof. So yeah, one of the battles in the Resnor fight, obviously, is dealing with the lag. Um, as I mentioned previously, sometimes you can just get some of your inputs eaten, so um, you definitely want to take him out really quickly. So here we're going to see why they want to be small Mario with Yoshi here, is uh, they're going to use Yoshi to get, oh, get him back. An evil bullet bill there. Yeah, he's going to have Yoshi push him through the pipe. Uh, that You can only do that as small Mario. And we see Mitch taking care of... Resnor really quick so as well. Big. Yeah. <laughs> so slow. <laughs> and Javim's about to get his turn soon. Absolutely. So yeah, this is actually, this part is from Iggy's castle um, and SM, SMW as well. <laughs> they even put Koopas back there, but you can't punch them. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> They're just teasing you. Like, haha, yeah. you'd love to punch this if you wanted. <laughs> Nice first one from Java. Mitch also gets the clip. It's actually um, a fairly easy check yeah. for them to do. Um, it's it's not subpixel related or anything, so they can always do it. I think we can hear a donation. Sure thing. We have twenty-five dollars from Jabum's mom. <laughs> Good luck, Jabum. The dome is super proud of you. Try not to do too much toy. <laughs> Can I do one more? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We have $100 from Bearcat Girl. <laughs> no matter how hard you try, Mitch and Gadian, Flavorless Jabum is here to salt up your night. <laughs> Woo! Watch out, Mitch. He's gonna get ya. <laughs> Woo! Great. <laughs> All right, so you can see here on Gadian's uh, screen, he's in the water level. Uh, with those spikes, they introduced a, well, the spikes didn't introduce a mechanic, but a new mechanic that we like to use is holding down while swimming. swimming. Yeah, it actually wasn't in vanilla SMB3, um, but it's really nice because it allows you to swim through that section instead of having to walk really slow on the ground. And it just really overall improves swimming, being able to control Mario better in the water. And we see on Jabim's screen, actually, we didn't mention this, but the overworld enemies in this world are the dinos. And he actually purposely jumps off Yoshi there while eating him at the same time to, as you see, freeze him in the ground. And it makes the fight much faster because they spawn quite slow. <laughs> that res though gets me every time. <laughs> I think this is a good moment for another donation. Sure thing. We have $115 from Glackham. Ooh. Hey, Glackham. Hello, friends. Here is the $115 the Yellow Lums took from me in Rayman 2 earlier. Hope the race goes great, and Jabum, you're going to kill it. Save the frames and kill Steve the Koopa. <laughs> Which one is Steve? Steve's the... We'll see him later. He's the only Koopa in the game that doesn't damage you. <laughs> Steve's a nice guy. All right, so which, which airship is uh, Gadian on right now? So those of you that are fans of SMB3 will recognize this airship and maybe have a little PTSD from it, but it's um, the World 4 airship, except it doesn't auto-scroll. Um, it's infamously known as the slowest moving auto-scroller in that game, and so it's much more bearable when you don't have to wait for it. Yeah, you're going to see uh, Gadian grab that shell through Bowser Jr. 
and spit it back out to skip a lot of cycles. Uh, what Bowser Jr. will do if you're unable to do that shell skip is uh, cart around the spikes. And, yeah. yeah, it saves a really significant amount of time, a few cycles. So, um, And Mitch right behind him here. He's caught up in World 4 here. We got a race. And Jabum is also right behind them. So now we're getting to see World 5 for the first time. Um, those of you that are Super Mario Land fans might recognize some of the enemies and themes in this world. This first um, level is actually 1-1 one, one, um, from Super Mario Land. And these little Sphinx enemies actually do appear in that game as well. They are the worst. <laughs> uh, so you saw the Sphinx. Uh, the reason why they had to go for that star in World 1 or 2-1, uh, World 2, is so that this Sphinx fight coming up next is so much easier to handle with the star. Yeah, um, they're able to reduce the lag by removing the fireballs from the stage as well as, uh, you know, killing off the Sphinx really quickly. Because uh, the star destroys the fireballs as well as the yes. enemy, so it yep. gets yeah. some sprites off the screen. Absolutely. And so we see Mitch doing the same thing on his screen. So you really don't want to land in the quicksand on this stage. Uh, there's a lot of places you just kind of get stuck and lose a bunch of time. So it's really important to make it through that section without getting stuck somewhere. Oh, and then here we see the Mario 2 mechanic of digging that was put into the Mario 3 engine. I love this digging animation. It's <laughs> yeah. so much faster than the regular game. He's just raising the roof, man. <laughs> and you sometimes get the double dig. <laughs> yeah, that is just altogether way faster digging than than regular. <laughs> yeah. so this is a really neat mechanic. When he hits that, when Gideon hits that box, it fills that area up with quicksand. Yeah. And that's how he's going to be able to get out of that section. Oh, there's the yump. There's a yump. That's a first frame jump off the top of the P-Switch. Uh, that's a one frame trick. It's just purely for swag. Actually, it does save a little bit of time in this just because you can get up fast. Oh, yeah, true. Good point. I'm actually going to donate $5 per yump that every one of these racers has been getting. So I got my Let's wallet go out, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, you'll recognize this boss again if you're a Super Mario Land fan. It's the World 1 boss from that game, the Sphinx. Reimagined in Mario 3. That was a really quick fight. Nice job. Yeah. They're pretty much neck and neck here. Jeez. And Chabham's right behind him in the same stage, so. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of time in this run for things to turn around, though, so this is still a very, very, very close race. Yep. And Chabham gets the yump. Nice. Oh. And so Mitch actually going for a wall jump there. Um, to save a little bit of time. Unfortunately, he doesn't get it. But remember that thing we were missing? Remember that? that are you talking about the, the, the big square or the or what the shape was that sphere? again? I think it was a sphere. It or, was wait for it. Was it orb? <laughs> Whoa! Orb again. <laughs> Everybody loves the orb. So this level takes inspiration from the sand stage in Super Mario Brothers 3. And I feel like he thought, how can we make this stage a little more evil? Let's turn it into an auto-scroller and then add a water section at the end of it. That's why the sun's angry. <laughs> he just doesn't like to be in his own level. <laughs> I think this will be a good time for donations. Yeah. You got it. We have $325 from Rooster. Ooh. My grandmother and mother are cancer survivors, so I'm excited to donate and make sure we can do what we can to help cancer research and prevention. Or <laughs> It's good to see good people doing good things while playing good games. Shout outs from the Jabba Dome. Here's to all the blessed RNG you'll need. <laughs> Sun's just just as angry as he was at the beginning of the level. Chill out, man. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. <laughs> They're almost out of your level, man. Just. Well, see, Mario gets to go on, but he has to stay there. It's his level. Yeah. True. 
So this is uh, another unique stage. Most of World 5 is actually unique um, and doesn't appear in any, any game, just uh, his original design. Um, and we get to see a lot of cool stages throughout this run. And at the end here, both Mitch and Gadian will be getting another shot at the Sphinx. Although this fight's a little more difficult, you see that on Gadian's screen and Mitch's, they had the jump before the start of the fight. That's because when the Sphinx lands, he actually stuns you if you're standing on the ground. They are neck and neck. And unfortunately, Gadian gets an extra Sphinx fight, so um, he doesn't... He was, that, was that RNG or...? Yeah, that's RNG. Yeah. Bad, bad map movement and for the... Yeah, he couldn't equip an extra star either because he just moved right into him. So, good old Mario 3. What would it be without RNG? Yeah, RNG changing the race right now, putting Mitch out in front. Yeah, Yeah, and uh, you're going to see another familiar enemy, actually, at the end of this stage. Um, although he's lost two of his friends, and now he's just a single Clyde. <laughs> he, he gave up. He doesn't try anymore. <laughs> oh, Gave Mitch a little trouble there, but he's able to make it out. And so he's actually, and that's actually fine that he's small. He's going to equip an upgrade for the next stage. Yeah, this is a good stage uh, where Mitch is going to, to use the penguin suit again. Yes. And we'll see why. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah, it helps them swim through the oil actually in this stage because you know penguins love swimming through oil. Is this Texas? This is what I figure Texas looks like. Oh, Mitch loses the penguin suit. Now you're gonna see what that oil does. <laughs> we need to get those people with the ducks and the dish soap to <laughs> clean them off. <laughs> You'll get to see a, a clear difference how the penguin suit acts in the uh, reacts in the oil versus not having that penguin suit. Yeah, it's really important to keep it. You just move so slow without it. Yeah. Though Mitch don't care. He's he's off <laughs> the stage. And so we get to see a nice little crab fight. So this is the overworld enemy uh, of World 6 here. And this world's actually based on Super Mario Sunshine. And we'll get to see, um, I believe they're called the Pintas. Pintas? Pintas, yeah. Pitas? Mmm. Pitas? Mmm. <laughs> They're delicious. All right. <laughs> this, uh, this bonus room, fun fact, is actually, I think it's an homage to the Mario Bros. arcade game with the crabs coming out of the pipes and you have to hit the blocks from below yep. and flip them over to destroy them. So are we going to do lockout bingo for Sunshine? Or? <laughs> so, oh, it's coming up later. Right? <laughs> And so, yeah, unfortunately, none of the stages really draw um, direct inspiration from Sunshine other than the overall design because, you know, you're trying to redesign a 3D world into a 2D game. Look at all those Legos. That looks like every parent's worst nightmare. <laughs> what, what stage is this from? This is actually um, Mario Zone 4 in Super Mario Land 2. This first section is a remake of that. Super Lego Land 2? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think you could do one donation. Absolutely. Uh, and I think we have one from someone you might know. We have $250 from Grand Pooh Bear. <laughs> hey, guys. Hope you all have a close race. Make sure to keep those legs still. MF Pooh love. <laughs> Thank you, Pooh. Congrats, Thanks, by the way. Pooh. Congrats Congrat on your baby. Yeah, so on Mitch's screen, we actually just saw um, our first look at the grape soda. It functions just like the red ragu in the fortresses. You don't want to land in it, otherwise you'll instantly die. So, just another obstacle. Kel would hate this level. He likes ooh, orange stuff. Ooh, Gadian. <laughs> Calm down, man. And hey, isn't that, isn't that that guy from Smash Brothers? Yeah. Oh, yeah. no. It, it turns out he was just a bunch of stars in a trench coat all along. <laughs> Turned uh, into stars when he died. <laughs> that was Petey from Mario Sunshine. Petey Piranha. Petey Piranha. Mm. 
And so yeah, for the third hit, he actually floats above the screen and you have to kind of run away from him in order to get him to come down and, and stomp on him. And then his hitbox lingers on the screen for some reason after he dies. So that was a very nice stage from Mitch. He actually um, purposely does not have a penguin suit in that stage in order to go through those waterfalls a little quicker. Would the penguin suit slow you down the waterfall? Yep. Hmm. Yeah. Because without waterfall. it, you maintain P-speed yep. through this. OK, then. And we see Gadian doing the same thing there. And then Mitch re-equips it just because it makes this uh, crab fight much smoother. And we get to see Mitch's favorite level in the entire game. It is a remake of Vanilla SMB3 7-4. Although there are quite a few, uh, or there are quite a few less um, enemies in the stage, thankfully. The classic Watto scroller. <laughs> I think this is probably a, a good time for some donations as well. Yeah, absolutely. We have two hundred and fifty dollars from Shma. This money was burning a hole in my pocket, and I'll always take Mitch Flower Power over a hot pocket. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. $10 from Kangaroos Are Cool. Don't do toy. <laughs> oh, Kanga. <laughs> we have $100 from Laser Dante 218 Yoshi Sacrifice on the Nest. Take my money. <laughs> <laughs> it's the guy that knows what he wants. <laughs> We have $572 from 572. <laughs> Gonna try to do this a little justice here. Did you hear about Big Bork? Thick and Big Bock and Bork. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard, tell me more. <laughs> And so they're coming up on uh, two of the most important strats in the entire game. Um, the first <laughs> level here is a ghost house, but you have a single frame to jump where you- And, and he gets, gets it! it. Nice. Oh, Beautiful. no! So, uh, yeah, that's a single frame and allows you to skip the entire level, um, or skip to the end of the entire level. So he gets a pretty significant time save there. And then the next level here, actually, we're going to see on Mitch's screen is also, it's probably the most important strat in the entire game to hit. Because yeah. you skip an entire auto-scroller section if you're able to fly over it. So we're going to see him maintain this tail and actually um, do his best to fly over this section. He only gets one attempt at this now because he did get the skip in the ghost house, so. This is crucial. Yep. And he should be good. And he gets it. Nice job. Yeah, otherwise you're riding on that very slow platform as yeah. it slowly takes you across the yeah. lava there. But you can just fly over all of that. And we see on Gadian's screen, there's actually a leaf in the previous stage that Mitch missed out on. So um, he gets an extra attempt at it if he does fail the first attempt. Javim does not get to skip either. upside down mechanic is really messing with my head. Yeah, yeah. this is actually the first stage in the game that uses that. And we'll actually see it um, quite a bit later on in World 7 as well as again in World 8. And PD giving Mitch a little trouble there, but he's able to get out of there. So we got a little preview of the gravity. Yep, just a little preview. Just a little, little taste. <laughs> it's Gideon also getting the auto scroll skip. Nice work. Yep. Now we'll get to see Javim attempt the same trick. I'm not feeling too sure about it, so he goes back. 
Um, one of the interesting things about the airship that Mitch is on, there's actually a section where you go straight back in the pipe you just came out of. So there's some sections of this game that are meant to trick you. Um, but obviously he's played enough that he knows exactly where he's going. And he's going to do a trick here where he bounces on that shell and hits Bowser Jr. in the corner and then is going to do the next two cycles really quickly because Bowser Jr. will come down and instantly damage himself. So... Oh. Oof. So he gets another attempt at it here. Now backup stress are vital, especially for a race. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's just a testament to how precise you have to be with this fly skip that mm -hmm. even the world record holder, you know, is being extremely cautious. You have just enough space and just enough P speed. He's just oh, gonna make it. Got it. All right. <laughs> yeah, I can guarantee after that level, they all feel a lot better. Yeah. Because <laughs> that is probably the, the scariest part of the rest of the run. So, And as we see on Mitch's screen, we see this reverse gravity theme that we're gonna see in World 7 here, because it's actually based on Mario Galaxy. Yeah, here you'll see, as you notice, you'll see the gravity start swapping uh, as they go through certain parts of the stage without any kind of pipe transition or anything. This is a really, really cool mechanic to have the, the creator to put in this game. It can be really tricky to just make levels like this thinking on both sides, and it can be really tricky to route as well. Yeah, he, it, he pretty much had to reconstruct the game from yeah. the ground up. And so the next stage is going to be familiar to people who um, like the Lost Levels, although it looks a little bit different. It's our first look at um, Big World, in, and that goes back to World 4 in Vanilla SMB3, but this is actually a combination of 1, 2, or sorry, 1, 1, and 1, 2 in um, the Lost Levels. Excellent mid-air jump there from Mitch, turning around in the, in the air and getting that shell active to go off it in the middle of the air. That's really, really, really good. It is worth noting he did that for swag. <laughs> it doesn't actually save time. Worked on me. <laughs> yep. He just wanted to show off. <laughs> nope, does not lose any time. And yeah, it's really important for them to keep fire through this level, as you can tell with all these piranha plants coming up. They want to be able to take them out so they can jump on these pipes easier and make it through the stage quickly. And so yeah, Gadian as well, um, equipping his fire flower here for that reason. Yeah, it can be really helpful when you're running through a stage with P-Speed to just be able to snipe things out of your way. Oh, yeah. Gadian loses it. And so Mitch actually making it to the middle section of World 7, and we're going to see the Fire and Ice theme from Galaxy uh, come into play here. I want to ask you guys, how are you liking 3 Mix so far? <laughs> Steve's going to be coming up soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is really the everything bagel of Mario games. It's got yeah. all the stuff in it for you. It's it's one of my favorites. It's just something because everybody really love. It's it's not overly difficult. It's just a really fun game. And we actually get to see vanilla SMB 1-5, except it's upside down. And so we get to see the upside down tunnel. Upside down MFP tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little easier to do it that way. PFM tunnel. <laughs> right, so now we get our first look at what we call the Roombas. Yeah, it's actually the cleanest stage in the game. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like Mitch might make a really good sweep of it. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Leave. I will go. <laughs> it's 
So he's got to jump on that Roomba and then kick it into the little squiggly electrified line there on the side in order to damage it. Yeah. He's having a little trouble getting off it there. <laughs> we, call, we call that the DJ Roomba. <laughs> So yeah, Jabba making his way through 7-2, like I mentioned. He's got his Fire Flower, so he's able to do it um, much quicker as a result. I love in the upside down levels how when something dies, it falls upward yeah. too. <laughs> I have to go now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we get to see Mitch use gravity to his advantage there and... Um, make it up to that platform. Normally, you'd have to use a vine, and he just runs off the next platform to take out the little Q-Berts there. It's just like Q-Bert always says, grind your skirt. I mean, how do you follow that? <laughs> I, I have no idea. True, and, true and here we are. <laughs> there was Steve. Just get to run right through him. He can't damage you. And I, really, I really like the inclusion of those hopping fires, too. Those little uh, little fire snakes that Mitch was jumping over, too. Oh, yeah. So, so here we get to see the uh, first introduction of the boomerang suit in Mario 3 Mix. Yeah, and I, I believe it was first introduced in 3D Land. So, um, drawing from that game. And it functions similarly in terms of Mario 3 to the hammer suit, if you've seen it in the vanilla game. I wonder if they'll ever bring the boomerang suit back. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> the collective groan. <laughs> and so it, it's actually going to be important for him to maintain this boomerang suit through some of these levels because we're going to see Roomba fights again and he's going to be able to use that to his advantage to make the fight much quicker. Um, and that section he just passed with the, the switching gravity is actually quite difficult to make it through. Oof. A little mechanic uh, fact about the gravity is that when you hold down your jump button, it'll uh, propel you even further mm -hmm. in that direction. So going through those spikes is pretty good so yeah as we as I mentioned we saw a match with the instant kill on the the Roomba there and we see Gadian he's about to pick up the boomerang suit as well and they're they're gonna use this suit a lot because uh, it allows them to take out a lot of enemies and reduce a lot of lag because as I mentioned that's part of the battle with this game is reducing some of the lag Jabba making it out of the first Roomba fight. I love the little kick Luigi gives it. Like, go on, Roomba, get out of here. <laughs> Don't do this at home. Don't kick your Roombas at home. They're not evil. They do not want to hurt you. And Mitch makes it flawlessly through the waterfalls. So yeah, on Gadian's screen, we see that switching gravity section I talked about. It's quite difficult to make it through without taking damage. Um, but he'll be able to re-grab that boomerang suit right here. Um, a cool little mechanic, if he did take damage there, maybe the bullet bill launcher fired. Um, as long as that boomerang suit is spawned, it actually will upgrade you all the way to that. And so on Mitch's screen, we're actually getting to see the first look at 7-6 at a GDQ, although it's upside down, or at least the interior of 7-6. And then <laughs> this, of course, is 7-1. I really, really like how this game has this upside down levels that like the same level from the original game can be recontextualized to be really interesting when you play it upside down. And then this is actually upside down 5-2 um, from the vanilla game. So it's actually in that level, it's really important to avoid a lot of the platforms and ensure you fall as quickly as possible. You can save quite a bit of time doing so. And we're going to get to see the final Roomba fight here. Good Roomba. <laughs> and we see Gadian navigating his way through the waterfalls without falling in the pit. It's a little scary when you do that part. 
And on Mitch's screen, we get to see the SMB3 World 7 Auto Scroller. Little did you know, apparently it was only about five feet off the ground. <laughs> I don't understand why you die when you fall off of it, but... We know why. <laughs> I love how you can just stand on the ground. <laughs> like, you're not even on the ship at all. Nope. I'll get on when I'm ready. <laughs> It's like the ship got docked somewhere and they're like, it's never, it's never leaving. And Jabba makes it out of the second room to fight there. It's the instant kill. It's probably a good time for donations. Absolutely. We have $50 from Matt Krua. <laughs> Hey, GDQ, extremely excited for this race of a really cool hack. One more great run in a week of great runs. Shout outs to an incredible host, Soraya, the incredible Rage on the couch, and my boy Iggy in the crowd. Do the Mario. Is there like a Mario move that I'm You better do it. You swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go. Do the Mario. <laughs> oh, all right. And we get to see the last <laughs> look of Bowser Jr. that we're going to see in the game here with the um, alternating gravity. Is this the moon? Yeah, yeah. We definitely have two moons, and they're definitely adjacent to each other. Oh. That, that, that works. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll believe that. Yeah. Here we get to see uh, our first look at Rosalina. the center of the universe. So the cool thing we're going to see here starting in World 8 is that all these levels are kind of just a rehash of what's already occurred in the game. So 8-1, as you should be able to predict, is going to be SMB-1. And we're going to see this first section is actually going to be a recreation of 8-1 from that game. And then later on, we'll see 8-3 as well. Your boomerang really gets a lot of time on screen when you throw it forward when you're running. It stays in front of you for a really long time, and as you scroll the screen, it kind of moves with you and can really just take out tons of enemies in a row like that. Yeah, sometimes as well, it's a challenge to re-grab the boomerang because you want to fire it again because it's just like zipping around the screen. <gasps> oh, oh, no! Finding the gap there. No, no checkpoint. Ooh. Yeah, the checkpoint is really late in that, in that level. So his, so his boomerang isn't coming back then? No. 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 Quite a poor boomerang, uh, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> the one boomerang that didn't come back. It's de defective. So yeah, we, we're now seeing why he really wants that upgrade here. Um, he's really struggling with the lag. Um, in the level. So Gadian has a chance to really pick up some time here in A1. <laughs> and so yeah, the section he's entering now. Ooh! Oh, oh no! Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny hole. The gap's giving him a little trouble. And so, yeah, this is the section of the stage that's actually 8-3, including the end here. The flagpole. <laughs> First try. First try. <laughs> And so, yeah, as I mentioned, we're going to see a rehash of what we've seen. And this is actually the inside of 7-2 in SMB2. And Mitch is actually going to attempt to do a little skip here that's pretty easy. You just click, clip in through that wall. It's a pretty free clip as long as you're able to duck and get above the pipe. And then he gets the glitched Mauser fight. So apparently, he only gets half of his stage now. Phantom Mauser ain't done yet. OK, he's done now. Moonwalk, yeah. very cool. 
<laughs> and so yeah, this uh, is actually vanilla SMB 6-2 with a spooky take on it. It's dark now, and all of the Koopas are replaced with dry bones. That is pretty spooky. Very spooky. I can't watch. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> Oh, getting getting the clip as well. Nice work. And he gets the two cycle. Nice job. And the moonwalk. All right. All the swag today. <laughs> and now Javim's going to get his shot at 8-1, and he's still got his upgrades, so... He'll be able to use this Fire Flower to reduce quite a bit of lag in the stage. And Javim has a shot to make up a lot of time here. <sighs> really good P-Speed management anyway. Even though, yeah. he, even though he took damage, he's maintaining his P-Speed, and that really, really serves him very well for that level. Yeah, he made it through the section of the stage. That's really important to have fire anyway, so um, wasn't the biggest deal that he took damage there. And we get to see Yoshi for the last time on Mitch's screen, and we're going to get to see a familiar friend. Bye, Although, Yoshi. I guess Mitch... Oh, hi, Barry. <laughs> for the last time. Yeah, Mitch ain't taking no chance of a berry. No. Nope. <laughs> Not getting buried today. Not Very nice, eight one from Jabba. <laughs> Anything. <laughs> Jam's gonna go for his clip here as well. So yeah, he intentionally <laughs> takes some damage there. Was able to get the clip. So on Gadian's screen, if he's able to maintain this Yoshi, he'll save a little bit of time going in the pipe, as well as we'll get to see an interesting interaction with the Lakitu in the next room. Be kind, Barry. Be kind. <laughs> Barry's never kind. <laughs> oh. 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 Yeah, one of the things uh, with the game is when you press up, you'll jump off Yoshi, unfortunately. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so Mitch, Mitch, having to get thrown Mitch up decline, there. Mitch declining to take that clip. And so yeah, we get to see the auto scroller section here of it's the Mario Zone 4 inspired portion again. Gadian screen, we get to see our last look at the Super Mario Land inspired stages with the Sphinx enemies. Paragoomba trying to give Mitch a little trouble there. It's probably a good time for donations. Sure. We have $5 from Birdo. Can I offer you a nice egg in this trying time? <laughs> <laughs> and an anonymous $500 donation. <laughs> that says simply, Mario Hype? Hype. So yeah, on Mitch's screen, we're going to get to see the last galaxy-inspired stage of the run. Um, so you're going to know which side of the platform you have to jump on on this stage because uh, it'll be longer than the other side. So you have to really pay attention to that. Um, as you can tell, the gravity switch is here. Does that happen automatically, or is there...? Okay. Yeah, it automatically yeah. happens. Mitch so gets through it. Jab him, we'll see if he's able to make it through with Yoshi. And so we get to see the glitch Yo Yoshi sprite, his feet. Yeah. <laughs> and he gets ditched in Yoshi fashion. 
He's become a monster. Get rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> we plan to anyways. <laughs> what have I created? <laughs> And so, yeah, the beginning of Bowser's Castle here is actually um, an auto-scroller. Uh, it's fairly lengthy. The stage itself is about four minutes long. Um, and there is, you know, in typical three-mix fashion, another potential clip you could get. We see Gadian making it through the Galaxy stage as well. So it's going to be really important for, um, you know, neither runner to take a death in this stage. It deaths are very, very, very costly in an auto scroller. It's the, probably the worst place you would want to die. Absolutely. Any Absolutely. run. And uh, there are some little dangerous parts of this, I guess. Like, there's a lot of enemies on the stage, and um, one of the important strategies of the stage is delagging it. And so we see Mitch killing the Lakitu in order to do that. Now there's a lack of lag. <laughs> you and the puns. <laughs> 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 You're like a genius. <laughs> Teach me. <laughs> Later. <laughs> it's probably a good time for another donation. You got it. We have $5 from Dan F. The Everything Bagel of Mario games? Top tier commentary. Take my money. <laughs> And so, yeah, Mitch has now exited the auto-scroller section of the game. And as I was talking about, there's some stages where you really have to figure out where you're going um, in order to complete them. And this is definitely one of them where you get thrown into this extra room, have to hit a switch, and then you go back in the same room and then have to run backwards. So um, there's a lot of routing that goes into this. And if you're playing this for the first time, it's probably going to be really confusing. But we'll, sh we'll show you how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, the, that switch caused that pipe to spawn mm -hmm. in this section right here. And so in this section, there's a, a little shell jump that Mitch is going to attempt that's... It's, it's really easy, but it's kind of difficult to keep the shell because there's so many enemies in your way. Um, and he does a good job there. So he hits the switch, and he gets the little jump. Nice little time save. Nice. Yeah, that's not the way you're supposed to go back. You're supposed to go up and around, but by bringing that shell, he can just get right over the wall. So now we'll get our look at Bowser for the last time in 3Mix. Hey, it's him. I know that guy. So yeah, time is coming up for Mitch um, once he completes this fight and the screen fades to the credits. It's a little bit different than the regular Mario 3 Bowser. He needs three, three hits to take him out. Yep. Yeah, the... Time is coming up for Mitch. Time. MFP. Great run. Nice work, Mitch. Thank you. Have you played Mario before? <laughs> couple, just a couple. One oh six seventeen. So yeah, the reason they don't use the boomerang suit on Bowser is he actually doesn't have a hitbox that allows you to hit him with it. So. And sometimes his aim's a little off, as you can tell. Time coming up on Gadian. <laughs> Time. Time. <laughs> Crushed it. Well. Shabum, 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 shabum. Shabum, 
Pipe? Question mark? <laughs> Pipe? <laughs> and Jeb, I'm also going for the shell jump strat here. He actually purposely takes damage there because he's worried about hitting that guy with the shell. Oh. Well, he didn't show you the rest of the level. Intentional. Yeah, this is what we skipped, yeah. Pipe? <laughs> go, Javin. Let's go, man. <laughs> You'd think Bowser would just stop building his fortresses with, like, bricks that he can smash through and fall in lava. Like, man, my floor is really unstable. I should call a contractor or something. <laughs> I kind of appreciate the lava on the ceiling. I should stop filling my home with lava. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Time for Javin coming up. Nice work, dude. Michael Bublé of gaming. Great run. Great runs. Time. Nice job. Whole time. I didn't. All right, so this has been SMB3 Mix. Go play it. <laughs> yeah, it does. We have $100 from Rassern202, a race of a game that has elements of every Mario game in existence. Never heard of Mario Brothers 3 Mix, but wow, this is entertaining. Sign me up. Shout outs to the couch's amazing knowledge of the game's references. We have $35 from Fish195. It's amazing what you can fit on a nest cartridge nowadays. What's next, tax filing? And we have an anonymous $250 donation. Thank you so much for your generosity. And now we are going to kick things over to an interview with Darkman. Take it away. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to AGDQ 2019. I am Darkman78, and joined by me is a fancy little doctor right here. Not a doctor. Doctor Just playing one on TV. Dr. Bun, right? That, that's what you need? Yeah. That's, that's what I'm pretending. Okay. Trojan Rabbit, everybody. This is the runner for Trauma Center Under the Knife 2. So that run is going to be happening after SMRPG. And if you've never seen a Trauma Center run before, I highly recommend staying up if you know, plan on going to bed after SMRPG because it's a fantastic speed run. And Trojan Rabbit's going to help us kind of explain a little bit about it. So Trojan Rabbit, you are, by the way, from Australia. That's kind of far away, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I've, I've now been in America for as long as my flight to America, which was 26 and a half hours door to door. Whew, that is a long flight. Yeah. I, I don't even want to know what kind of sleep schedule you're operating on right now. I'm not. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Trauma Center itself. Uh, for those who are not familiar, this is a, you know, kind of a doctor-oriented game uh, revolving around surgery. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the game and like why you like it as a speedrun? Sure, it's, um, it's an incredibly anime touchscreen surgery simulator. I like to think of it as a bit of, um, it's Atlas made an arcade game that's meant to steal all of your quarters through ridiculous things, except they didn't realize the DS had a coin, didn't have a coin slot. Oh. Somewhere yeah, there's a retry button. It's oh, okay, that's it, that's it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I've watched like a Trauma Center run before, and 
I'm just blown away by him. Like, there is so much movement going on with the runs. You have to do so much with your, with your hands and with the stylus. Uh, and we'll kind of get into the stylus in particular in a little bit. But uh, how do you kind of manage the fact that you have to shuffle through multiple different, you know, items that you're using uh, with the surgeries and kind of trying to do it as fast as possible, not actually end up, you know, dying? How do you, how do you juggle that? I think of it as more like, you know, this kind of like real-time strategy game where you're kind of managing your APM, I guess, for lack of a better term. I so much of it just comes down to familiarity. You just got to grind it, grind it, grind it to get there and just learn what you've got to do. But uh, sometimes the game throws just complete nonsense at you. Mm -hmm. And you've got, you got to come and find a way through that. And again, that's just knowing what the tools do. Gotcha. And being able to hit it as quick as you can. Gotcha. All right, so you have a little bit of a unique setup with this game. You, in fact, use two styluses uh, for the style I? Styluses? I, you know, I, don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, uh, talk to me about that. Why does it use two styluses? Uh, so the main thing is just simplicity. Like, you're using a DS touchscreen, and you've got tools on either side of the screen as your selection to use during the game. So if you want to do select a tool on the left side of the screen, you want to use your left hand to do it. The other thing is the DS touchscreen is not very sophisticated. Uh, like it's not an iPhone. It can only really accept one input, which right. means I can make objects teleport. <laughs> I'm a surgical wizard. It's what I do. That's why you are a doctor. Not a doctor. OK. Oh, that's fine. Um, so talk to me a little bit about the people on, your, uh, on the couch for your run, because I know th this is a pretty big community effort, uh, you know, not only you know, for you being a part of the run, but also your couch and you know, the commentary. Yeah, uh, so we're going to have Iris Joker, who's run uh, Second Opinion and New Blood, two of the Wii games uh, in the last couple of GDQs. Uh, there's also going to be Ultra Biscuit, who's run Trauma Center a few times and is doing a Puzzle Bubble, uh, I think seven or eight hours after my run. Uh, and there's Ace of Arrows, who's uh, another member of the Trauma Center community who's come out for this. Cool. What does it mean to you to have those people on your couch? It's huge, just to like, be able to meet these people that I've known online for so long, spend the time with them, play this game that I love. It's, it's a pretty good opportunity. Cool. Awesome. All right, so we're going to get into a few social media questions. Um, we're going to start off with uh, this pretty cool question, I think, from uh, Starbits, who says, uh, Trojan Rabbit, who's the best doctor in the Trauma Center series and why? It's SESK. He's a wizard. Uh, SESK is a, a Japanese speedrunner, uh, has played every single Trauma Center game from Under the Knife to Trauma Team, and has held world record in any category that's worth mentioning uh, for some period, uh, found the majority of the tricks, and is yeah, like I said, a surgical wizard. Um, but if we're talking about doctors in the game itself, it's, it's Derek and it's only Derek. You're right. <laughs> but yeah, I, I agree with XDS, okay? This guy's amazing. He's a legend. Like, I don't watch many Trauma Center speedruns, but I, I am aware of that man, and uh, that's quite impressive. Yeah. Um, so we have another question from RNA Boris III, I believe, if I'm saying that correctly. Uh, Trojan Rabbit, would you feel comfortable performing surgery in real life? Oh, God, no. Uh, the, the medical knowledge I have uh, comes from Scrubs, which is mostly accurate. Trauma Center, which is wholly inaccurate. And uh, quizzing my wife, um, who's studying for tests. My wife is actually a doctor uh, working in an ICU unit. Uh, I understood maybe one in four words while quizzing her. <laughs> so um, if you had me performing surgery on you, uh, it's not going to go as well as this run. Good. Well, as, lo as long as you believe that the run's going to go well, then that's fine with me. Well, it, it'll go at least better than a, a brutal, bloody, unfortunate death. <laughs> like, that's, that's the bar I've set. OK. Well, even if the run doesn't go well, I still think the run is going to be an absolute treat to watch. So I highly recommend everybody watch the Trauma Center run. But before we go away, I'd like to first thank Trojan Rabbit. But we're going to talk to everybody's favorite man, the prize man, Sent himself. Sent, hello. Yeah. Always good to have the microphone on. Yes. Yeah, that, that's always wonderful. Hey, look, it's on. Hey, it happened. <laughs> <laughs> always good to be here. Now, you know, we had a little bit of a short opportunity to talk before this interview started, um, and I found out that Trojan Rabbit over here uh, does not know how to do the Mario. I don't. He, he doesn't, and I feel like that's a problem. That is an integral part of, you know, any 80s child's uh, childhood, basically. Understanding the Mario. So, Trojan, we're going to need to give you 150 cc's of the Mario stat. I didn't agree to this. D I mean, too bad. We're doing this. But I, I didn't All right. agree to this. Now, this is, this is simple, Trojan. All you got to do is you got to swing your arms from side to side. Yeah? All right? That's, that's the first step. All right? And, yeah, now you're doing it. You're doing the Mario. And then you just take one step, and then again. And there you go. You're doing the Mario. Just like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
I'm still quite comfortably seated, but... Yeah, no, nobody, nobody did the Mario with me. That was, um, that was wholly a failure. I'll give you a solid 8.9 out of 10, though. See, Darkman appreciates me. Yeah. Oh, uh, all right, guys. So we have some awesome prizes to talk about that are available uh, all throughout this Mario block tonight and all the way actually until uh, Medal of Honor Airborne uh, a bit later tomorrow morning. Um, so from our great friend Jay Thor, who does all kinds of wonderful sculptures uh, right here in the center of our desk, we have this beautiful Gino doll. Um, he is fully articulatable. Um, he's incredibly detailed. I love this little guy. He's, he's absolutely amazing. In fact, why don't, I, why don't we uh, just pick him up real quick and make it easier to get him on camera for you guys. Um, it's a little tiny, but again, like all of his joints move, you can bend his, his legs, turn him around, move his hands, stand him up. He'll, he'll stand by himself uh, a little bit if you get him in the right pose. Um, and he's, he's just super adorable. I, I love this guy. He is a $35 minimum donation between now and the end of Medal of Honor Airborne. Um, and I mean, again, he's, he's absolutely one of a kind. Is, you can't go down to like the Geno store and buy one of these. You have a Geno store in Australia, right? Oh, yeah, it's right next to the Big W. Oh, yeah, that's, that's what I thought. Right, he, he's not available on the shelves. Uh, so $35 minimum, dollar minimum donation if you want to get in on Geno. I'll just put him down right there. Um, so again, right here in the center of our table, we have a beautiful jungle green HDMI modded N64 that comes to us by way of Andy J Retro. Um, little fact, uh, jungle green N64, I think is the third or fourth rarest distri uh, distribution of the N64 console. I'm not that surprised. Um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, one of the rarer ones, to my knowledge. And I mean, it's been HDMI modded, so hey, hey. I, that, that's, that's always useful, frankly. I, <laughs> Absolutely. I, don't, I don't know about you guys. Uh, occasionally, I have to lug about 108 CRTs places. <laughs> but for people who aren't carrying a small armada of older televisions, uh, you know, just having an HDMI mod for your console is going to make it a lot easier oh, to yeah. play. And that's a $30 minimum donation from now until the end of Medal of Honor. So hey, make sure you get those donations in. Um, over there, on top of Croc Meyer on our shelves, we have a beautiful little Geno hat sent to us by Robo Stitch. $10 minimum donation from now until the end of, uh, end, end of Medal of Honor. Yeah, there you go. He's a professional Trojan Rabbit. I'm oh, yeah. Tro Trojan it already knows what he's place? doing. I love him. <laughs> uh, and right there, next to that hat, we have a beautiful Super Mario RPG cross stitch depicting everyone's favorite kissing scene from that game. I mean, come on, if you're not getting the good kiss scene, what, what are you doing in Super Mario RPG, really, right, Dark Man? I really don't know. Uh, that's sent to us by uh, Pidge01, an amazing pillar of the Super Mario RPG community, and it's a $10 minimum donation from now until the end of uh, Medal of Honor. Yeah, cool. Um, also over on that side of the room, we have a beautiful SMB3 Mix Warp Perler uh, sent to us by Forest Kitty, as well as that amazing SMRPG Chain Chomp Amiibo from uh, Chibi Silver Wings. Uh, the Warp Perler is a $5 minimum donation. Um, I mean, hey, it's super cool. Who doesn't like Wart? The answer is everybody. Nobody likes Wart. It's just a fact. I like Putting it out there. All right, Darkman is wrong. But that's also a fact. Putting it out there. Dang. Um, that SMRPG Bowser Chain Chomp Amiibo, I love it. When uh, Silver Chibi Wings uh, initially donated it, I thought it was just like a real Amiibo. I didn't realize, you know, it had been modified. and was like, wow, they're getting really fancy with the Amiibos. <laughs> these oh, I see. That's a $15 minimum donation from now until the, uh, the end of Medal of Honor. Uh, right here behind Darkman on the shelf, you can see it in the upper uh, left corner of your screen there. Uh, we have a beautiful SFW Auto Map Canvas. Uh, $10 minimum donation comes to us by Studio Pin Pin. Love their watercolor style, looks super great. Um, yeah, 10 bucks, get your donations in. Guys, you want to win that, I want to win that. I'm not allowed to win that, but you're allowed to win that. You Trojan should. Rabbit is allowed to win that. Trojan Rabbit is allowed to win that. Trojan Rabbit, get your donations in, man. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll throw some. See, there, there we go. We're getting donations. That's what we do here. <laughs> um, also, right behind Darkman, we have a beautiful handmade pokey plush uh, from a good friend, Steel Feather. Darkman, you want to head, uh, well, behind some stuff. Don't oh, worry oh, about grabbing it yeah, right it's now. Fine, it's fine. Um, but I, I love this pokey because his segments are magnetic. So you can actually just take them apart, reassemble them in any configuration you want. You know, stick anything else you got that's magnetic, uh, magnetic in there. We were playing around with them earlier, putting, uh, putting Bomberman's bomb on his head. You know, just doing fun stuff with them. Uh, $15 minimum donation for now until the end of Medal of Honor. Guys, we have so many amazing prizes. Also behind Darkman, we have a beautiful Woodburn Super Mario Bros. 3 picture from It's the Me, Alex. $15 minimum donation. Uh, absolutely love the shading and detail we got it. Woodburning is just such a cool art style. I, I love it. I love it. Um, from our friend Julia Z, in my hand here, we have this nice little cross stitch of uh, all the Mario outfits from Super Mario Brothers 1 to 3. You know, you got more normal Mario, Fire Flower Mario, Green Mario, all the Marios you could ever want. 
I'm seeing a trend here, Seth. There's a lot of prizes you could win over the next few hours. There are a lot of prizes you could win over the next few hours, guys. And if you're interested in them, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to head over to gamesdonequick.com. You're going to want to check out the tracker, because that's going to have all the information uh, that you're going to want on upcoming prizes, on upcoming uh, incentives, and the upcoming speedruns we're going to see in this marathon. Guys, we got a great schedule prepared for you, and we've already raised $430 for charity. That's, that's absolutely amazing. Let's, let's give that a round of applause. That's, that's crazy. That's so much money. But I want to keep seeing that donation total go up, and uh, I know it will as we head over back to the front and get ready for Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars by the amazing Just Incredible. All right, that's, that's going to do it for me. So I am going to turn things over to my friend here. Thank you so much for letting me spend some time with you. And please keep those donations coming. Hello, everyone. My name is Kyle Box. I'm going to be your host for the next couple hours during this Super Mario RPG run. In fact, we got a donation here from Hobsit, $50. Looking forward to the Mario RPG run. The best Final Fantasy in the series, hands down, which we'll be seeing later because that donation incentive has been met. And let's not waste any time, and let's get right to it. 